Welcome everybody, we are going to have a new video for Ubuntu Touch and I and Sander, are you there Sander? I'm here. Very good. We are going to explain an application and a very uh, basic application to just kick off the shoes and uh, let's start running. What is it that we're about to make Sander? Today we'll make a simple app, um, a simple countdown app where we'll make use of the uh, QML timer component. Ah, very useful. So let's uh, kick off. We are uh, going to uh, start to make a project, I uh, guess. So we start uh, typing, clickable in it, making a new project. We'll select a QML only template. Give the app an app title, a short description. Yeah, here we can use spaces. Yes. Here it should be only a short name, no spaces, no capitals, namespace. Video team, as we like to call ourselves, some domain for the email. Licensing year. Okay, up and running. We need to get in the folder and we can do a clickable desktop or a clickable, this is on the phone. I don't know if my phone is functioning right now. Oh, I don't see it, but clickable desktop. In the other video, we explained the differences. And there we have it up and running and we have the basic app. Okay, so what's the first thing we're about to do? The first thing we'll do is add a timer component. We'll give this component an ID so we can uh, access it from other components later on. So whenever we say assemble our countdown in the code, we will have that piece of functionali functionality uh, that we call, that we uh, ignite. Exactly, we can uh, address it from uh, other components. We'll also define the property running and set it to false. This will prevent the timer from starting uh, with the app because we want to um, uh, only start it when the user starts it. And what is very important that you understand that these components can be found in the library. And in the library we will find properties and possible values for those properties. And that is the way that we uh, investigate before we make such a functionality. There are some other properties. Which one do we need and why? Next up, the repeat property. We don't want a timer to repeat unless we say so. So we'll set this to false. So by, by default, when the timer ends, it won't repeat itself. And every time the timer starts, it should run for exactly one second. And we can achieve this by setting the interval property and this property is defined in milliseconds. So we'll use a thousand uh, milliseconds now. Then we have the on triggered. That sounds like an event to me. It is. Here we can tell the timer what to do when the timer has reached its interval. So when the thousand milliseconds are gone, uh, it will uh, do what's in between these uh, curly uh, brackets. And we can use some JavaScript there. We can, we, you can use the language JavaScript over there. Okay, let's continue. We also need to imagine a little bit what we want to see on the screen. So we just have a label in the middle which says uh, something like hello world. Uh, and we can use that. But we also need to fill out how many seconds we want to be counting down. So therefore we need a text field. The next text field is an editable text field in which you can add uh, text and we give it an ID so that we can call it on other uh, fields, uh, on other components, I must say. Anchors are for positioning, right? Yes, they are. The label anchors uh, with its top on the page header bottom. The left side of the label goes to parent.left and the parent of the label is its page. So it spreads out over the entire page with these anchors. 
So we are uh, working on the anchors right now and you have the want to have the uh, width being taken. So that's why the top and the left and the uh, right are being programmed. They can be a little bit more or less the same as in the label, so I might copy these. So here we go. Now the input field will um, anchor to the bottom of uh, the page header and the left and the right side of the page. And an input field isn't that uh, high by default, so we don't have to uh, define a bottom. Now we want to add a button to our app. So the user will be able to uh, trigger the timer. We'll add a text to it. Very good. Start, yeah. The anchors again. A little bit different this time because we use that input field, the text field that you see at 39. The bottom of that one, there we want to start with our button. And when it gets clicked, we want these actions to be happening. So colon and then two curly brackets. And within kind of like JavaScript, we do the timer label the text that is going to be the input field text so when we fill in 15 seconds it comes it says 15 at time label we wanted the label at 57 we wanted to announce it uh, then countdown dot start it kicks off the countdown is the timer the timer takes a second and then when it finishes he does the untriggered and then he says okay I have the time I get that out of the time label it's text I'm taking that as a time yeah and the time label text is the text that just got set by the user yeah we subtract one point and then we assign it again Semicolon is not uh, a problem per se, but I do it many times not. Then an if statement, when the time becomes to zero, it's smaller than one, then we want it to be over, the timer is finished. So the time label, we give the text, the time's up. We return it. If that if statement is true, else we will start the countdown, which we are. We will start ourselves again, so that one second later, the trigger will kick off again. This should be it. Yeah, it should be it. Let's uh, test it. So here we go. Click, a little bit of an error, yeah. Oh, there is. And why is that? We didn't give the label an ID. We forgot it. I noticed that I mentioned to you the time label we want to take its text. We were talking about it, but we didn't follow up on that action. So let's therefore finish it quickly. And there we go, running it again. We do 15, we do kickoff, and it starts counting. And like each second, it deducts one point, all the way to zero. When it becomes lower than one, we get our action. That's it for today. Just a quick movie on how to work with time, buttons and labels. If you've got any questions about this project, please leave a comment down below. Thank you for watching and see you next time.